in uh, in the Buddhist tradition, we speak of uh, love in terms of uh, true love, in terms of uh, loving kindness, compassion, joy, and equanimity, uh, uh, or non-discrimination, or inclusiveness. In order to really understand compassion, you should understand also the three other elements of true love. The first uh, element of true love is um, loving kindness, maitri. It has the power to offer happiness. If uh, love cannot offer happiness, it's not true love. It, your true love offer you happiness and offer him, offer her happiness. This, uh, it's not the willingness to offer happiness. Because if you don't understand the other person, the more you try to make him happy, the more you make him suffer. So understanding him, understanding her uh, suffering and need uh, before you can you can practice uh, loving kindness, maitri. Uh, in Asia, there is a fruit called uh, durian. Uh, many people crave for it. <laughs> but for me, um, I cannot eat it. And then you say, dear Thay, he works so hard, he should uh, eat some durian. And then you make me suffer by loving me. <laughs> <laughs> so we should understand uh, the other person in order to really uh, make him happy. And that is why understanding is the other word for love, for compassion. And that is why uh, we should ask our partner, darling, do you think I understand you enough? <laughs> if I don't understand you enough, please help me. My wife is right there. So, <laughs> 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 so, so my tree, loving kindness, is not just the willingness to, to make a, a person happy, but the capacity to make him or her happy, and that requires compassion, uh, understanding. And understanding requires time in order to look, to look deeply. And then the second element is compassion, which is a karuna. Uh, Greek compassion is called maha karuna. Compassion has the power to remove the pain, the suffering. If your love cannot make the other person suffer less, it's not true love. And you have to understand his suffering, her despair, in order to help him or her suffer less. And that is why uh, you need to have the time to look and to listen. And understanding will create uh, love and happiness. And the practice is that you have to apply that for yourself. You have to apply, uh, you have to be able to offer you happiness and compassion. Do we have enough compassion towards our body, our feeling? Do we know how to handle our body to make it uh, suffer less? Do we know how to handle a feeling so that you can help calm down the feeling or emotion? That is self-love. The capacity, see, the capacity to love another person relies entirely on your capacity to love yourself and take care of yourself. That is true with compassion. And, um, and the third is a joy, mudita. If by loving you make the other person cry every day, that is not uh, true love. True love. <laughs> so you create uh, you create a joy for yourself and for the other person. And there are many practical ways to, to create joy without having to go to the market and buy something uh, to offer him or her. Suppose you say uh, you breathe mindfully and you bring your mind home to your body, you become fresh and pleasant, and you go to her and you say, darling, you know something? I'm here for you. <laughs> 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 huh? 
How can you love if you are not there? To love means to be there. <laughs> to be there for the person you love. If you are so busy in your, in your work, if you are so busy making money, and then you have no time for yourself and for your beloved one. And that is why mindful breathing, mindful walking, you know, to bring your mind home to your body, and to be uh, relaxed, fresh, and loving, and pronounce the mantra, Darling, I am here for you. And you can, that is to bring joy for yourself and for the other person. And when you are truly there and offer your presence to him or to her, you have a chance to acknowledge the presence of the other person as something very precious to you. And that is why you can pronounce the second mantra. Darling, I know you are there and I'm so happy. That is, to, to be loved means to be recognized as existing. And if you're, you drive your car and you think of everything else except the person sit, sitting next to you, uh, she cannot be happy at all. So while driving, you use your mindfulness, embrace her, and you say, Darling, you know something? I know you are there next to me. I am so happy. <laughs> <laughs> so there are very simple practice like that, practice of mindfulness can, that can bring joy. And if, uh, if uh, he is in the office, uh, you can practice the mantra with your telephone or send, in, send him an email with the content, Darling, I know you are there and I'm very happy. <laughs> and that is why creating joy is true love. And the fourth element is inclusiveness. We cannot understand compassion deeply without understanding the fourth aspect of true love. In true love, there is no uh, discrimination anymore between the lover and the beloved one. You cannot say, that is, darling, that is your problem. In true love, your problem is my problem. Your happiness is my happiness. My suffering is your suffering. There is no longer any frontier. Inclusiveness. In true love, happiness and suffering are no longer individual matters. And if uh, you continue to love like that, you begin to embrace all of us into your love. Because these four elements of true love are called the four unlimited mind. There can never be enough. You begin with one person, and then if you follow the the path of true love, your heart will open, 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 and you will embrace all of us inside. And that is true love is the kind of love that can enlarge your heart without stop, stopping. One day the Buddha was holding a, a, a glass of a, a bowl of water in his left hand. He's holding a handful of salt in the right hand and he poured the salt into the water and he stirred. And he asked the monks, my, my, my dear friends, do you think that you can drink that uh, water? It's so salty. But if uh, you throw that, uh, um, that amount of water into a big river, it will not make the river salty at all. And people, thousands of people continue to drink the water in the river. So with someone who has a great heart, a big heart, a lot of compassion, they don't suffer anymore. The things that make other people suffer do not make them suffer. It's like one handful of, of salt can make uh, salty uh, the bowl of water, but cannot make the whole big river suffer at all. So the four Brahma Vihara, the four elements of true love are unlimited because uh, by loving in that kind of way, one day you will embrace all of us in your heart. 
you, you love not only humans, but animals, plants, and minerals. Because minerals, they are alive also. Minerals can suffer. And that is the love recommended by the Buddha. The love without frontier, without discrimination. And the, the fourth element of true love is inclusiveness. No discrimination whatsoever. Black or white, uh, north or south, uh, rich or poor, are all objects of your love. And when you have that kind of love, you don't suffer anymore. And you are in a situation to help many people. And that is why all of us who want to serve uh, our society, uh, we should uh, cultivate uh, true love. With true love, we are nourished. You are strong enough. And if we know how to build a community of love, a love community, a compassionate uh, community, and then uh, we will be powerful enough to make change in our society. Um, I would like to make a few suggestions. Generating the collective uh, energy of uh, compassion should be a practice that should be done in a family, in the, in the hospital, in schools, even in the parliament. Uh, A guided meditation on meditation with 1,000 people can generate uh, a collective energy of compassion. And that can be felt. And maybe scientists have the way to measure the intensity, the degree of compassion. Because we can feel it. One day, uh, I gave a talk in Germany and I, for 1,000 people, and I saw four young mother nursing the babies. And the baby were being fed by mother milk. But I saw that uh, the atmosphere in the hall is so peaceful, so compassionate. Because everyone was speak, uh, practicing mindful breathing, generating the energy of mindfulness, brotherhood, sisterhood, compassion. And I saw that the four children, but four babies, they are, they are having that kind of food also. And they feel it. They are very peaceful. Um, when we come together as a group like this, and if you know how to breathe, how to contemplate suffering, how to generate the energy of mindfulness, the collective energy can be very powerful. And if you happen to be in the zone of that energy, you get the healing. If you practice mindful breathing and focus your attention on your in-breath and out-breath, by doing so, you can stop the thinking, the mental discourse. Because the thinking may take you away from the zone of compassion. So you cannot inherit uh, profit from that uh, that energy, uh, collective energy, compassion. Um, create such a collective energy of compassion is, is, is what we should uh, learn how to do. Because the best thing to offer to humankind and other kind species also. And please, as scientists, Tell us how we organize in order to, to offer the world that wholesome collective energy of understanding and compassion, because what, that's what we need. We cannot do the healing of the world unless we have enough of that energy, understanding and compassion. Usually in a public talk, we begin with the chanting. We have about 100 or 200 monastics uh, 
uh, offering a chanting. Uh, in a few days, we have one in uh, Paramount Theater. And uh, everyone uh, sitting in, uh, in, uh, in the audience, there may be 4,000 or 5,000 or more. In Hong Kong, we had uh, an audience of 10,000 people uh, attending the talk and practicing mindful, mindful breathing together. And we create a very powerful collective energy of mindfulness and compassion. The monks and the nuns, they have been instructed to chant the name of Avalokiteshvara, the great being of compassion. Uh, and uh, while chanting, they try to go home to themselves and touch the suffering inside of themselves. And the purpose is to allow compassion to be born. And when they chant for the second time the name, they reach out and recognize and touch the suffering in the people in front of them, on the left, on the right. And the, and the aim is the same. Allow compassion to be born and to grow. And when they, sh they send the third time, for the third, third time, the name of uh, the compassionate uh, Bodhisattva, they reach out and touch the suffering a little bit everywhere in the world, Asia, Africa, Middle East, South Africa, everywhere, violence, war, death, uh, 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 despair, um, hunger, and so on. And the purpose is the same, generating energy of compassion. And the audience are, are advised to practice mindful breathing in order to stop the thinking and allowing the collective energy of mindfulness and compassion to penetrate into the body and help release the tension in the body and open the heart and allow the collective energy of compassion to penetrate into our heart, helping to embrace so that we can suffer less after a few minutes of practice. So that, that is the way we cultivate the energy of compassion, not only uh, individual energy, but the collective energy of compassion. And yesterday, I was spending a day of practice with the Google people. We asked them whether they, with technology, they can help us uh, organize in order to practice generating compassion together uh, as a community, as a, uh, the community of uh, human beings. And uh, I think um, when you uh, guide, when you give a guided meditation on compassion and with image and sound and helping people touch the suffering in themselves, in their family, in society, you notice that uh, the energy of compassion is born easily, and you can feel it. And when every time I sit with the monks and the nuns chanting, and the people listening while breathing, I saw many people cry that the energy of compassion can be felt, and it's very healing. And uh, we hope... Uh, mm, uh, you can teach us how uh, to do this on a greater scale because really our society needs that kind of energy. And we know that uh, compassion is made of non-compassion elements. We can make use of non-compassion elements like anger, fear, suffering in order to create uh, compassion. If we have suffer. If we have fear, anger, despair, these non-compassion elements can be made, can be used as elements to fabricate compassion. It's like the garbage. If you are an organic gardener, you can preserve these garbage and transform them into compost in order to nourish the flowers. 
So with the suffering that we have in the world, if we know how to handle the suffering, we can transform them back into compassion and love. And please uh, uh, see care uh, with your studies. Help us to, to, to know how to do it uh, uh, more scientifically and uh, in greater scale. I think it's time for us to ask a few questions. So if anyone uh, from the audience uh, has a question, uh, there are microphones here and here. This is compassion they're okay. fighting before. <laughs> Tay, uh, I wanted to ask you, uh, as a man in the Western society, I was raised, I was told not to cry. In sports, I was told to exploit the other team's weaknesses. In business, I'm told not to show any weakness. And I was wondering if you've seen this difference between how compassion in men and women, is it seems harder for men to generate this compassion. And if there's any way we can make compassion more attractive, maybe to men, more, <laughs> um, you know, more, more of a strength than, I mean, than something, you know, I mentioned compassion to men that I talk to and, and they walk away. They, they, they don't want to know anything about it. And I was wondering if you've seen that difference between men and women and if you have any advice on how we can bring more men into the compassion movement. Dear, dear Tai, I would just like to repeat the, the question so that it is clear. Our friend is asking that uh, about the difference in compassion for men and for women. So growing up in Western society, um, he was taught not to cry. In sport, he was taught to exploit the weaknesses of others and in business also. And so his question is how we can make compassion more attractive, more accessible for men. And if Thai might have any ideas, how to make it more appealing. There must be some uh, misunderstanding about um, the nature of compassion here because uh, compassion is very powerful. If you think that compassion makes you weak, you are wrong. Compassion may cause a man, a person, to sacrifice his life for, uh, to save other people. And um, we have to redefine what is compassion. It's very powerful. And uh, we have to embody that kind of uh, energy uh, in our uh, in our uh, in our uh, daily life. We have to educate people about uh, this. Uh, uh, we have to show what compassion can achieve. Uh, when when someone is angry, uh, he is being burned by the fire of of, uh, of anger. And if he knows how to practice compassion, anger will die down very quickly, and he looks much better, much more beautiful, much, much more attractive. <laughs> and that is why we have to exemplify, is uh, embody that practice of uh, compassion in order to persuade other people to, uh, to do the same. Uh, compassion helps us to sleep well. Compassion protects us better than guns and uh, bombs uh, and money. Many of us think that uh, we are safer to, uh, if we have more money. But you can lose your money very easily. But compassion is a kind of energy that can help protect you much, much more uh, effectively than, uh, than money. 
and compassion help you to relax and your body has more capacity to heal itself uh, uh, compassion help uh, uh, you to be pleasant to be loving uh, and you can restore communication with the other person easily if you have compassion in yourself you understand the other person uh, your compassion can help you do your business better because you are uh, in good relationship with other people, including your employees. So you can list uh, 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 a lot of qualities uh, of compassion. And uh, we should have a man, a woman, a community of men and women practicing community, uh, practicing com compassion like that in order to show people that compassion is something very powerful. And uh, I hope in the Department of Neurology, there will be a community practicing together and showing people, not by um, lectures only, but by the way of life. Uh, with compassion, we are much happier. We suffer much less. And we should embody our teaching by by, by faculties and students. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.